everyone, welcome to Gaming Weekly. We're uh, pretty clearly in a different place today. We're yeah. on, on location in some place in Silver Lake playing Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah. We don't go on location for just anything. No. Only uh, ripping spines out and eating brains. Yeah. Not really related, but this episode is sponsored by Mack Weldon. They help keep your guts inside your body, so that's important. You can get 20% off your order at MacWeldon.com using promo code GAMINGWEEKLY20. Well, I really hope that that's... Someone's getting murdered right next to us. I hope that's in the game, and it's not just Silver Lake. Oh, yeah. Already. Okay, this is it. This is the one. I can do that fatality anytime. Ow! Ow! Ow. From the very start. This? Ow! No? Ow! Ow! I'm trying to, I'm trying Ow. to use that text. Oh, there it is. Ow! Ow! Ooh! No, I'm not. Can you kill with a fatal blow? I think yeah, it does. Pop up in that fatality. Oh, I'm just curious if it would take you to zero health or like point one. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh no, do it. No, you're getting two. Oh. I'm not done. What else is there to do? Ah. Dang it. You weren't dead enough yet. Fatality. Oh, look at that. Some flopping out. Wins. Oh, that's so awesome. All right, Trevor, uh, you said core technology, right? Yeah. So this is. What does that mean exactly? Is this the fighting game mechanics? Is it the graphical systems? Is it all of that connected? It's more the graphical systems and stuff okay. like that, and the animation systems and stuff like that. My team manages the engine that we use to build our games and stuff like that. Okay. So the animation system, physics system, online rollback system, rendering, everything. You guys have been putting out some really incredible tech yeah. uh, that gets iterated on. I mean, just from the promotions and from the, the focus on the, the bloody, uh, or death blows and stuff like that. Excuse me, what are they called? Fatal blow. Fatal blow. Yes. It'll get there eventually, I promise. <laughs> it seems like blood was a big focus this time. Yeah, yeah. So we spent a lot of time developing our fluid simulations, like to get them super, super realistic and, and how you would imagine like a, a, an amazing explosion of blood would look like, you know what I'm saying? We spent a lot of time like that. It was a big focus for the time. Yeah. I imagine that can be difficult. Mortal Kombat always has this incredible ability to just land right in the middle between disturbing and cartoon. What is what is sort of the uh, operating philosophy behind how you craft all that stuff? Well, I mean, we're really just trying to give fans more of what they want. You know, that type of, you know, the fatalities and the brutalities has been a part of MK history. And we're really focused on building on that, doing it as better and at, at like a higher level than we ever had before. So that's really what drives us. Um, we're really just focused on giving fans what they want, and that's kind of what guides us. So. Well, in that in that regard, what do you hear most from fans? I'm sure it's like more crazier fatalities, more ridiculous score. But are there some things that maybe surprise you that you have sort of had to rethink about to integrate into Mortal Kombat 11? Well, I think one of the things that we thought about a lot uh, that, that helped from fan feedback was the variation system. So, like, we had a lot of positive feedback in Mortal Kombat X, introducing the three variations for each character. Yeah. And we really wanted to take that to the next level and give uh, players as much customizable uh, options as you possibly could. So that's one of the things we're really proud of, and if you get a chance to play it, it is really, really deep right now. One of the things I find interesting, and, and from a, operating a game as like something that people are going to spend a year or more with, yeah. how do you sort of push back against the player base's tendency to settle into routine? So in the MKX, there were variations, but you know, in the first two weeks, everybody sort of had a gentleman's agreement. This is going to be the one we use. Right. So how do you sort of encourage experimentation in a scene where people tend to just settle out? Well, I think having the variations be customizable is one of those things. Um, making sure that the player has complete control is how we hope to kind of, you know, answer that question. When you talk about player control and variations and things like that, we were talking about this in the car on the ride over, like comparing Mortal Kombat to other fighters, more Japanese fighters. And now Mortal Kombat tends to, like it's more about the mind game of the engagement and then it's somewhat cinematic. You got your dialogue combos, you got your, you know, your canned animations. Uh, as opposed to something like technical execution, uh, combo focus and things like that. So is variations your answer about how you can sort of blow up the, the mind space of the game? That's one way, yeah. absolutely. I think the other way that we do that is just with content. You know what I'm saying? We tend to have more content than any other fighting game in our genre. So if you don't like one section of the game, we've got plenty other things to do. Or if you get bored with something else, you can go into Towers of Time and really dig into a lot of the content there. So that's one of the things is we always want to keep our content levels really high to you know, give as many things to do to as many players as possible. So you, you touched on something interesting, which is that NetherRealm fighters mm. are very content uh, complete, which right. is interesting because it seems like a lot of other publishers are struggling under the budgets and, and the audience constraints to make 
fighters that are like content packed, sure, or content sure. with a K. Uh, so, you know, stuff like Street Fighter V not having story mode. How, what, to what do you attribute NetherRealm's ability to make games with such ridiculous amounts of content when other fighters in the scene seem to struggle to get there? I mean, the, the content creators we have at NetherRealm Studios are, are amazing, amazing individuals. Like, they are the ones that spearhead all of that. There is a large team of people that work on it, and it's, and it's the direction of those teams that helps us create as much content as possible. The efficient direction of those teams that really drives it home. So. What are you most excited for people to finally see about this? Like, from your perspective, working on performance systems and things like well, that. Well, I think you get a good indication of what we're excited to see just by all the fan reactions and yeah, stuff like that. Pop -offs like, I mean, all of the fluid simulations look great. All of our cinematic content is just off. It's out of this world in this game. And so that's the, that was the thing that we were most excited to show off. You know, typically we show off at E3. We didn't get to do that this year. So we've been oh. keeping it bottled up just for this day today. And uh, we're really happy to be able to finally share it with you guys. I guess this will be the last question. I know that Mortal Kombat has kind of got a, a reputation for still keeping that old vibe alive in regards to the secrets and stuff like that. I'm not asking you to reveal anything right now. But if you were to just like nudge someone a little bit, like maybe check this sort of thing out, maybe look for that, what would you tell people? Spend some time in Towers of Time. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yep. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you. Protect me, War Banner. Ah! God! Oh, I was gonna two kick it. Ah! Oh, I took all the damage later. Two kick. Ah! It's got pretty low, pretty close range. I guess it's not a. Ah! Ah! Oh, well, the spine flew out too. It's like a party popper. Oh! Oh, it hurts. Ah! Uh. Oh, you know what I'm gonna Gonna get the bonk. Just imagine like a little squeaky toy sound. Ow, ow, ow. Huh. Oh no! Ah, uh, a good arterial spray. Alright. Popped you. Popped open like a crash test dummy. Goodbye, I'm back to sand world now. Oh, all right, that's pretty sweet. Oh man, so what did, what did you think? There's a lot going on in that game. There's a lot of changes. I'm always amazed how they can make Mortal Kombat again and again. Yeah. And I'm still like excited for the new stuff. Feels like it's a lot of what I enjoyed about the previous games and the Injustice series, but now there's like slight little tweaks. Like the Amplify system is like a little bit different and the mm -hmm. Brutality system is like a little bit different. So. Yeah. It's uh, to me, this is the most opposite of something like Dragon Ball Fighters you can get. Yeah. That game is all about it's fast, there's a lot of buttons, it's ultimately technical. mk is more about just the mind game of footsies, and once you land those big hits, it always pushes you back to neutral and you start again. Yeah, we were saying, because we were playing it earlier and it felt like an MMA fight where the ref kept breaking up the yeah. ground, ground, uh, groundwork and saying, no, back to your feet. The game is constantly bringing you back to your feet, saying like, all right, square off again, and then try to bang your heads together again. Yeah, on the drive out here, we were talking about like how momentum works in fighting games and how even if you successfully block a string, that doesn't mean it's your turn. Yeah. And MK, it absolutely means it's your turn, or at least you're back to normal. Yeah. Which I appreciate. I think that, I think that some people get really frustrated at fighting games when the game does something they're not expecting. This game resets your state often, and I, I appreciate that because I that's the part of the game I like. I like the jump in. I like the block. I like the footsies. I'm not so much on watching somebody just execute a five minute combo on me. Yeah. I mean, just sitting there waiting to die. I'm sure we're also gonna see more characters that come out that have moves that kind of disrupt that though. Yeah. Lots of moves to get you in, and then when you're in, keep you in. Like obviously, 
it all starts back in old Mortal Kombat where Scorpion had a spear and you're like, oh my god, if I just hit someone with the spear, I can then do whatever I want to them afterwards at the time was just an uppercut. But now they have variations where he can teleport behind. Yeah. We'll see, there's lots of characters, um, the rock guy, what's his name? Oh, Cronus or something like that? No. Or Jervis. The rock man. He there's has, too many. He has a combo that literally brings a projectile behind the oh, yeah. other opponent and on a low, low I think, yeah. and so like, and then there's a follow-up where you grab him and throw him. So all kinds of stuff that I'm sure we're gonna see. That it's like, yes, you are neutral, but it's not always gonna be jumping in or who can get that first attack in. And you talk about the spear. It's to me, Mortal Kombat was always about the theater of it. Like I frozen you, and now there's this tension. What am I gonna do? And this game has so much of that. Even just in the animations, it's like. You'll, you'll just bash someone and then just stare at them for a little bit and yes. then you gotta reset to neutral because your guy will walk backwards and it's up and fight. Yep. So to me it's like it's it's very spiritually accurate to what Mortal Kombat always has been. It's got that it's got that theatric element. Uh, and man, the death blow me the death blow system is so interesting. Because it like it comes back. If you oh, win yeah. it, you still get it back. So yeah, yeah. it's the most comeback mechanic. I thought the like the ultra meter in Street Fighter 4 was a really good implementation of like a comeback mechanic. This one might be a little too much to that end. I don't know. We'll see because it's also it's entirely separate from the meter system of the game. Yeah. The game has basically four bars worth of meter that you can build up for offense or defense. Uh -huh. But then it used to be well, you can't do that if you want to do your X-ray attack. You have to save up the meter to be able to get the X-ray attack. So it was like a big deal. But now it's like no, no, no. If you're if you're almost dead. You can do it. It's yeah, like do it. Uh, Fatal Fury, you know, they have desperation oh, yeah. attacks and stuff. It's like, oh, go for it. And then if you miss it, don't worry, it'll get a second chance. Like, they want that cinematic element in their game. And normally that would be distracting. But in this, like, like we saw a lot of skulls split in half in just the 50 minutes we played the game. And we were not even close to being tired of it by the end. I wonder, It's the pacing is just pretty good. Yeah. I could see fatalities sometimes get a little uh, a little annoying if you've seen them 80 times. I don't think those, they, they go, you go into and out of them so quick. Yeah. And it, yeah, speaking of meter, it just regens over time. Most fighting games, you have to do stuff to earn meter. So that's a whole meta game of like, well, I got to build up meter while hurting my opponent. This is just, no, you just fight. Don't worry about it. Yeah, It's yeah. just there to prevent you from spamming things, which yeah. is kind of, it makes sense. Yep. I mean, when people get a hold of it online, they're going to crack it open like a walnut and be assholes about it. So I'm curious to see what angles will take. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. Well, speaking of assholes, cover yours with Mac Weldon underwear. Mac Weldon is sponsoring this, uh, this show, almost a podcast. Got to get out of my head. Anyway, Mac Weldon, they make shirts, t-shirts, sweatshirts, socks, underwear, everything that can make you a comfy boy. And they do it well. Uh, they sponsored us for so long that we're kind of, we've had some infusions of Mac Weldon merch and it's definitely worked its permanent way into my, hold on a minute. Yeah. Yup. I don't know if you can see that tag. That's Mac Weldon. Every day. I recognize that crotch anywhere. Amen. But yeah, you can get 20% off at MacWeldon.com using code GAMINGWEEKLY20. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you take a look at our sponsors. They got some good stuff. I've been wearing it ever since we got ours, so. Really thick socks, too. It's winter. It's cold outside. I go right for my Mac Weldon's every morning to get my toes all warm. Yeah, yeah. So, once again, MacWeldon.com, code GAMINGWEEKLY20. And thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Mortal Kombat 11 looks awesome. Yeah. Remember that part in Ghost Rider where he was fighting the Waterman and he was getting his ass kicked and he was like, wait a minute. I am a Ghost Rider. I can turn into Ghost Rider. And then he yeah. did and he won. According to the announcement, Blackout will feature seven survival horror levels on a Wayland Yutani space station because it's alien. Uh, but here's where the Gamer Rage comes in. You play as Amanda Ripley, who is the main character from Alien Isolation. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that leads a lot of reporters to connect the game directly to 2014's very awesome Alien Isolation by saying, the next Alien game is only on mobile. Other outlets are calling it a direct sequel to Isolation 